What's up, everybody, and welcome here to a very special video edition of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We're going to get into the coverage of Syracuse and Pittsburgh as the rivalry continues. It is the rivalry that Syracuse always has every single season with Pittsburgh for football. Pittsburgh is in the Coastal Division and Syracuse in the Atlantic of the ACC, but is there? it is their constant rivalry game that they have every year. Syracuse plays every team in the Atlantic, and then they play a rotator with the Coastal, and then the forever adversary, the forever rival, is Pittsburgh in the Coastal Division. They played them, obviously, throughout history, played them in the Big East, and continue to play them inside of the ACC. The last time they went to Pittsburgh, Syracuse allowed 76 points. Pittsburgh allowed 61 for the highest FBS Division I A football game ever played, 137 points. Both teams try not to try to make sure that that doesn't happen this time around. So on today's broadcast, you're going to hear from a bunch of different people. You're going to hear from Pat Narduzzi, the head coach of Pittsburgh, Dino Babers, the head coach of Syracuse, my extensive one-on-one -on -one conversations with Scoop Bradshaw, cornerback of Syracuse and wide receiver of Syracuse, Jamal Custis. You'll also hear from Steve Adazio of Boston College and Dave Clausen of Wake Forest. So without further ado, let's hop on the line and get you to Steve Adazio in our conversations here on this Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora special on Facebook.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, and YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. You can also find it on Wake Up Call DT.com. of action out there for you but coming from central new york where i know a lot of your recruitment you've had a lot of success there no jordan williams just what you can say about uh, the cba product and what you've seen from him and kind of you know maybe his road onto the field this season for you uh, if he is a weapon that you could see out there a little bit more yeah i mean noah's uh, probably got the best hands on the team <clears throat> he's a tremendous pass catcher Good physical stature, tremendous guy. I think he's just working on, you know, he's still a young guy working on, you know, the details and the, uh, you know, uh, of, of the, the details and the fundamentals, the details of the scheme, um, and uh, but really made great progress uh, this past spring and this past preseason camp. And I think you'll see him have a really fine career here. And uh, I just think as he continues to grow and mature, uh, he'll take the next steps necessary, but uh, he's, he's a really good player and a really, really, really tremendous person. And to speak on the culture that you've helped to build at, at Boston College, obviously uh, four bowl games in the last five seasons. You're four and one through this season and just had a bounce back win after the loss to Purdue. Just what you can say about the grit of this team and kind of the MO of Boston College. Well, I think this is a team that has a lot of grit a lot of toughness, um, good, really great chemistry, and you know I think they're Boston College men, and um, you know, we talk about that here. And uh, Boston College man is a guy that's got high character, high integrity, uh, understands and appreciates, you know, wanting to be great in the classroom and on the football field. And uh, those are the kind of guys that I get a chance to have the privilege to work with every single day. So um, I think we pride ourselves on the fact that you know we're gonna we're gonna be a physical team, we're gonna be a tough team, and. Um, you know, and I think we've recruited some some good skilled players. So, you know, as we go down the home, you know, into the center of the schedule right now, right? We're, this is game six. Everybody's in the middle of the season right now. Uh, I think it's about <clears throat> figuring out how to make gains and improve. I think it's a little bit of good fortune and staying healthy. All these things come together. And you're hoping that you're going to, you know, get ready if you can be healthy to play your best football. And everyone's fighting against the same problems. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate your time. Good luck this week. Thank you. That coming once again from Steve Adazio of the uh, Steve Adazio, pardon me, of the Boston College Eagles. Steve Adazio and BC four bowl games in the last five years. They have four wins already. They're just a couple away from getting another bowl berth, which would be five in six years under Steve Adazio here in recent history, which would be tremendous for the team. And he was an assistant to Paul Pascaloni at Syracuse back in the day. So has his connections to Syracuse. He will play Syracuse at the last game of the season this season, Syracuse at Boston College. 
every other year going back and forth from hometown to hometown. But another another rivalry renewed, essentially, with BC joining the ACC and then Syracuse following suit eventually and keeping that rivalry going. Heading on to our next coach that I want you to hear from in our one-on-one conversation that I got to have with him on the ACC teleconference is Dave Clawson of Wake Forest. Dave Clawson and I had the opportunity to speak on his team. They just got a victory over Rice after losing to Notre Dame. After that loss to Notre Dame, he fired his defensive coordinator midseason. He said he's never done that before in 19 years. So I asked him what his team did in response, how he saw, even though it's only one game, how did he see his defense respond to this change and getting that victory, able to get that win over Rice? I know that it's only one game that since uh, since the firing of the defensive coordinator, but just what you can say you saw defensively on film in this game against Rice and just how you feel the team has responded now that they have a game on their belt. Well, I mean, it's hard to make a, a comparison. Um, you know, when you're defending Notre Dame, what they do and their personnel, it's a lot different than defending Rice with their personnel and what they right. do. But the one thing that I was really concerned with after the Notre Dame game was just our inability to get lined up. Um, just so many snaps, we were we did not have 11 guys on the same page. And, you know, the, the front and the, the coverage weren't matched. Um and so more than anything last week, I, I just wanted to see us get lined up and be sound and have the kids play fast and play with energy and play with emotion and play with excitement. And we did that for 30 minutes. And then the second half, you know, we had a big lead and we got some backups in and, and there was let up, which is concerning. But the, the let up was more to me in terms of physical mistakes. Um, we were still getting lined up. We were... Uh, sound with alignment and stances and our eyes were in the right place. We just didn't execute as well. But if you don't get lined up, you really don't give yourself any chance at all. And and that was improved. Um, and then you play a team like Clemson and you can get lined up correctly and it's still tough to defend them. Um, so, but that's step one. If you don't get lined up, you don't even give yourself a chance. And in that in terms of that, we did much better. And then as far as offensively with Sam Hart and just what you can say, you know, you've seen from him but through these first few games, first few weeks, as you're trying to right the ship on defense, what has he done to lead the charge on offense, in your opinion? Well, he, he, I mean, forget the opponent. He just, he played better. You know, against Notre Dame, um, I mean, the ball wasn't going where it should go. He was handing it off when he should have threw it. He was throwing it when he should have handed it off. He was keeping it when he should have handed it off. I mean, I, yeah, I don't care who the opponent was. If he played... Uh, like he did against Notre Dame, against most teams who wouldn't move the football. And I just thought last week he settled down. Uh, he made good decisions. The ball went where it should go. He was very accurate. Uh, he put the ball in tight, tight spaces. I think he hit his last 12 passes in a row. And I don't care who you play. That's that's not easy to do. That's you know Sometimes you don't do that on air. So, um, you know, he's a true freshman playing quarterback. He's going to have good games, and he's going to have games that he struggles. And we just make sure, we got to make sure we just keep getting them better. Coach, I appreciate your time. Yeah, you're welcome. That coming from Dave Clawson, once again, of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Dave Clawson, the head coach of the Demon Deacons, who are currently 3-2 and two on their schedule right now. They lost their only game that they played in the ACC inside the Atlantic Division. They lost to Boston College right before the storm hit. And once again, our prayers and our hopes go to everybody in the aftermath of the storm, that everyone is safe and sound, healing, getting better, finding peace, and that you know that God is with you. We are with you. I'm with you. And I I have nothing but prayers, hopes, and well wishes. And anything that I can do to help, I will be more than happy to help. Even if it's just talking on the phone or helping somebody find somebody or whatever it may be. Um, It it is with my great uh, appreciation and gratitude for the wonderful opportunity that God gives me every day to give that to someone else and say, you know, if I can help, then let me know. And we can all extend a hand, a heart, a prayer a well wish and a hope toward everybody healing from those storms. And you just heard the Wake Forest head coach speak with me about Sam Hartman. As I said, the team is 3-2 and two. currently as they head into the rest of their season. They still have Syracuse on the docket, 
and they will play the Syracuse Orange on Saturday, November 3rd. Time is still to be determined, and the network is still to be determined. That's going to be at home in Winston-Salem for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Coming up next here on the broadcast is Pat Narduzzi on the other side of this matchup between Syracuse and Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh this week. So, without further ado, Pat Narduzzi of the Pitt Panthers. I had an opportunity to speak with him, and here is our conversation this week. Uh, this matchup last time, obviously, in Pittsburgh uh, played out more like a basketball game, 76-61. to 61. Just what you can say about you know Syracuse's improvement that you've seen on film since that last trip to Pittsburgh and, and how you've improved as well and how this should be uh, more, more defense, so to speak, in this game than in the past yeah, we sure hope so. Um, you know, you never know what game is going to carry for you. I know that was, you know, I think the last game of the season, 2016. I know we were banged up a little bit defensively. Um, you know, I, I you know, hope it gets more back to a game like it was last year when we you know, went up to Syracuse. It's a little bit more of a battle um, defensively. But, uh, you know, um, you know, Syracuse is, a, is an improved football team. And, you know, I'm not going to speak for who we are, uh, but uh, I, like, I like the football team we've got. we got to come to play. We've had... You know, a couple of tough losses, so it's hard to evaluate where we are. Let somebody else do that. Um, but um, you know, we, we try to just look at our guys every day and, and say where are we. You know, it's a daily evaluation. But um, you know, I, I like the football team that we've got right now. Uh, I think we're getting better. I think we've gotten you know uh, beat by uh, you know three points to a North Carolina football team, and and uh, we've taken two tough losses to two top twelve teams, I guess, in the country. Um, so our schedule is, is brutal, and Syracuse is another brutal team coming in here. I think they're, they're, they're really good, and like I said, in all three phases, as good a special teams um, program as you're going to see, and, uh, and i got a lot of respect for Dino Babers. And, and we're all just rivalry, just rivalry that throughout history has found a way to stay alive and stay alive in the Big East and, and then move forward to stay alive here in the ACC. Just what you can say about rivalry games like this and, and what these games mean to college football. Yeah, I mean, rivalry games are, are huge, and, and uh, Syracuse is certainly one of those old Big East rival games, and one of the reasons we play them every year is is uh, a team that's just a little bit more emotion when you play them. Um, you know, they'll be cranked up. Uh, the Panthers will be cranked up, and, uh, you know, I think I think those, those regional rivalries are, are, uh, are huge. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate your time. You got it, Dan. Thank you. That coming from the head coach of the Pitt Panthers, once again, Pat Narduzzi. Pat Narduzzi and I getting an opportunity to speak as we have ever since he got to Pittsburgh. We've spent some time together, and I appreciate him being on the broadcast. On the other side of the matchup is Dino Babers, who also spent a lot of time with and have had the pleasure of speaking with and getting to know since he has come to Syracuse, and this being in his third season. Had a lot of time to speak with Dino Babers from day zero all the way to where we are today. And continuing on. So Dino Babers is next up on the docket here. And this is what we had to say to one another this week on the ACC teleconference when I got an opportunity to speak with him about the team. To uh, look at something that Eric Dungy had brought up uh, this week, as well as Scoop Bradshaw, the statement that you can't let Clemson beat you twice. Just how you've seen this team let that go in practice and, and leave that behind them and how you've seen the team move forward. If you if you've seen maturity from them in that respect and the ability to let it go and turn their focus forward. Well, we've only, we've only, been, we've only been together twice, once in a meeting and uh, once on the practice field yesterday, but they went about their business in a very mature manner. It seems like that they have moved forward. Of course, the proof is in the pudding, and we'll see what the results are on Saturday. But I think that uh, they put their best foots forward uh, yesterday, and they get another opportunity today in a couple of hours here. The defense, the last time you went to Pittsburgh, obviously, 76-61 uh, to 61 was the score of the game, 137 points. Just what you could say about the defensive improvement since that game and obviously this season, what this team has been able to do in year number three for you, which I know you stated was a key year to show this maturation process, especially on the defensive side. You know, uh, outside of uh, the, last, uh, the last drive of, of the Clemson game, I thought our defense has been doing uh, really well. We had some hiccups in the first game versus Western Michigan. I thought that that was corrected for game two and three and four. And I thought we played a fantastic game for the first three quarters. I really did. I don't think we're in that game without our defense and the way they played against Clemson. So 
I'm really high on them, and hopefully they're going to have a performance like 2018 and not a performance like 2016 at Pittsburgh. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Good luck this week. Thank you. That coming once again from Dino Babers, the head coach of the Syracuse Orange. Dino Babers at Syracuse is 1-1 one one against Pittsburgh in the rivalry. Lost to them 76-61 to in that game that was all offense. Pretty much a basketball game between Jamie Dixon and Jim Beheim at the time. And the irony is that I called it a basketball game, and a lot of people refer to it as that as well. And then Syracuse played Pittsburgh that season in men's basketball, and their score combined did not beat the score of the football game. So just kind of crazy and kind of interesting about how those things shake out. Now, Syracuse was able to win 27-24 at home last season for 2017, which makes that 1-1 one one record for Dino Babers. So lost 76-61, to 127 to 24 to be one and one against Pittsburgh all time. Syracuse is behind Pittsburgh in the series. Pitt leads the series 38 wins to 32 losses and three ties. And the last meeting, obviously 27, 24, like I said, they lost to Syracuse in 2017. The game will be on Raycom and that game is going to be at 12, 20 PM Eastern time on Saturday, October 6th. And to Get to more from Syracuse. You heard from the coaches on both sides of the matchup. You just heard from Dino Babers. Now it's time to hear my extensive one-on-one conversations with cornerback Scoop Bradshaw and wide receiver Jamal Custis. First and foremost, we have Scoop Bradshaw on the line with me. And uh, this is Scoop in my conversation, starting off with just what he can say about it. It seemed like he had some good plays in the end zone, at least a couple of them, to try and halt Clemson and in that single coverage. Just what what he can say about his improvement in single coverage and up against Clemson specifically with that as well. Uh, I mean, uh, I've just played good coverage the whole game. I mean, uh, I just wanted to keep them in front of me and um, not letting them beat me deep. Do you feel like you were able to silence a lot of those plays, especially some of those end zone plays against Clemson? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, they needed big plays to... Um, they get an uh, early start on us, um, and, I, and then I think we did it, me and, uh, me and Chris Fred did a terrific job on um, shutting them down from the deep passes. When you look at yourself, Chris Frederick, as well as Trill Williams, Andre Sisko, all the guys in the secondary, I mean, the secondary, the amount of interceptions that you guys are bringing in and what you're doing is on pace to eclipse what you did last year in like half the time. Just what you can say about the improvement. Oh, uh, we, we improved a lot. Uh, it started off during camp, I mean, um, we worked hard with takeovers, I mean turnovers, and um, getting the ball back for the offense. Um, so it's really paying off um, during the season. Uh, we're doing really great. We just need to continue. What can you say about Andre and Trill and what they brought to this team as true freshmen? Uh, um, I can say they uh, they doing they doing very good to uh, help us win, and, um, keep us keep us. Um, they're just helping us a, a big time with, um, with everything. I'm on, on the defensive side, I mean, with him getting picks um, at the game, uh, it was it was really good and, um, with uh, Cisco leading the interceptions. Uh, Antoine said on social media within the season to Andre to kind of share the ball a little bit there and let some of the other guys get interceptions, just a playful back and forth. Just what you can say it's like being in that room with the DBs. Uh, I'll say when, when get a pit, we all get a pit. Uh, everybody eats. When you look at this loss, what did you take away from this Clemson loss? What did it teach you? What did it teach this team at this point? Uh, just don't let them beat us twice, um, basically. Um, don't let this loss beat us in the pit game. And Dungey had said the same thing that Dino Babers had said it best, don't let Clemson beat you twice. What does that mean to you, and do you feel like this team has bounced back already in practice? Do you feel like you guys have let that one stay where it is in the past? Yeah, it's stayed in the past. Um, we on to the next opponent now. Um, just don't let them beat us twice. Um, we're going to get this W um, this weekend. And Jamal was talking about finishing games, shutting the door. Just what you can say about what you learned from that Clemson game and if you feel like there were some opportunities where you didn't close the door all the way. Uh, we just need to finish the game. Like, like he said, uh, finish the game, close the door. Um, better. We just need to do better finishing. Defense overall, just what you can say about the improvement this year. It seems like this is the best defense that Babers has put out onto the field with Coach Ward. Just what you take away from it. Uh, I mean, we, we did a lot over camp. I mean, with, starting with turnovers and everything. 
third down, um, and it's really paying off during the season, as you can see. Um, we really held a lot of teams down to less points that we want. Last time here in Pittsburgh, 76 points went up on the board for them. Just what you can say about the defense going in this time around and the improvements that you made. Uh, it won't be 74 points this time. There won't be 70 plus this time is what Scoop Bradshaw had to say. I asked him right then and there, you know, what is going to be the change? What is going to be the difference? And as simple as that, there's not going to be that many points this time around. And him being a part of the secondary of Syracuse and what Syracuse's secondary has been able to do thus far this season, they've already doubled the amount of interceptions they had last year. Already doubled the amount of interceptions. Scoop Bradshaw and the team, they had four last season through 12 games. Four interceptions last season through 12 games. This time around, through five games, they have eight interceptions. Eight interceptions in five games last season, four interceptions in 12 games. Let that marinate. Let that sit for a second. They've gotten an interception in every single game this season. They had two against Western Michigan, three against Wagner, one against Florida State, one against Connecticut, and one against Clemson in their most recent game. Four and one record. Eight interceptions, at least one in each game this season, has already doubled their output of last season. Speaking on Syracuse's defense and their secondary and what everybody's been able to do, everybody getting involved, Andre Sisco and Trill Williams and so on and so forth, and Chris Frederick, who was mentioned by Scoop Bradshaw. And so Syracuse's defense definitely picking it up, picking up the pace. The defensive line is breaking through and sacking the quarterback. The linebackers, although young and inexperienced, experienced are doing some good things uh, definitely kylan whitner you got to mention him in that case and ryan guthrie got to give him re- some respect where respect is deserved he came in as like a third stringer and has moved his way to be a starter and to push this defense and help this defense get better and then of course scoop bradshaw to chris frederick to trill williams to andre cisco and antoine cordy and so on and so forth the defensive secondary, which has had a lot of problems in recent history, is definitely doing some good things right now. Eight interceptions for the defense in just five games. Four interceptions last season in 12 games. So big ups and, and big time for the guys there on the defensive side of the ball. Switching to the offensive side, my extensive conversation with Jamal Custis is up next. Jamal Custis, wide receiver for the team in the final season of his eligibility. And here is our conversation, starting first and foremost, about what he learned about himself and the team after that loss to Clemson, where they had Clemson on the ropes pretty much the entire game and ended up losing the game in Death Valley 27-23. to 23. seconds and we didn't get it done so you know they're a good team and um with teams like that we gotta capitalize at the end when you defeat them last season then you play them the way that they do this season what does it say about where syracuse football is at right now uh it says that we came a long way from um you know previous seasons um like you said um last year we defeated them this year you know we came close um we wanted to get the win you know but it didn't happen but I like the way the team fought. Um, it just didn't go our way. So, you know, that just makes me proud of the team regardless that we fought the whole game. And you can tell everybody's bought in to what, what they got going on here. Defensively, what can you say, even though you're on the other side of it, just how well they've played and what they've done to give you guys opportunities? Them guys played phenomenal. Uh, they, they, like you said, they gave us opportunities all game. Um, you know, they, they held it down for us out there. And, and you know, when, when defense doing things like that, you know, we're we we one of the top teams. So, you know, them guys played great, and they've been playing great all year. So, uh, you know, big ups to them guys. You're five games into it. What have you learned about this team this season? How much has this team grown from that first game against Western Michigan to where they are right now going up against Pittsburgh? Um, Really just, you know, fighting throughout the whole game. Um, you know, it, it, last year things could have went our way. It was a lot of games that we, we felt like could have went our way, but we never finished and f- fought through the whole game, you know. So uh, this year, 
it's a team full of fighters, and we all believe in one thing and one goal. And you know, we all together. Not saying that the previous teams weren't together, but we all feel like we can reach that goal. You know, and, and this year everybody's bought in. You know, from from the starters to the guys that you know might not never play this season. Um, we all believe that in practice we we, we we hold each other to high standards. So, you know, I, I say that's like the the difference in the growth in the team that everybody's bought in and we all believe and and truly want that one goal is to, you know, play for A C C championship, play for a national championship, go to a bowl game. What created that when you said that all the buy in is here more so now than ever? What would you attribute that to? Uh Personally, uh, I feel like it's just, I mean, I guess every season we, we, you, you get tired of losing, you get tired of not making it there. I think that for some reason it's stuck this year. You know, we felt like we worked so hard, you know, and, you know, we felt like we deserve, you know, more. Um, coming up short, that it, it really hurts us every year. Coming up short, not be, being able to play in the postseason. I've been here for five years and I never got to play in a bowl game. So, it's like we we know that we know the talent we got, and you know it being my last year and a lot of starters last year, we wanted to make it our duty to you know get there. So I think that's just the difference that you know the, the older guys on the team that never been to a bowl game, we, we really want it, and you know we, we we try to make it happen. Lastly, for me, what you can say about Dino Babers from his message when he came in to what it's been right now, if he's kept his word to this team, and if you've seen him kind of change this team for the better. He definitely kept his word. Um, like he said, he always tells us to just trust, you know, trust what he's what, what he teaching us. And, you know, we will we'll be winners one day. And, uh, you know, looking at from now until when he first came, you know, he always he, he always preached the same things to us. Um, you know, just buy into what he's teaching us. And, you know, he, 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 he know what works, you know, and, and it's finally coming along right now. You know, it just takes... You know, we would have liked it to happen, you know, earlier, you know, when he first came. But, you know, it's just timing. So, you know, everybody bought in and he definitely kept his word. That coming from Jamal Custis once again of the Syracuse Orange on the offensive side of the ball playing wide receiver for the team in his final season with the Syracuse Orange. So once again, I want to give a special thanks to everybody that was a part of this Wake Up Call special broadcast today. I want to thank Steve Adazio of the Boston College Eagles. I want to thank Dave Clawson of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, as well as Pat Narduzzi of the Pitt Panthers. On the other side of the matchup of Dino Babers, who is also on the broadcast today, I want to thank Dino Babers of Syracuse. And, of course, Syracuse cornerback Scoop Bradshaw and Syracuse wide receiver Jamal Custis. As you can see, I always do different things in the videos, like Easter eggs, so to speak. So for those of you that watch all my videos, you can, you'll can you notice the things that are changing. Some things taken out, some put in and whatnot. Well, right over the Wake Up Call logo, there's a drawing that I created, and that is a uh, drawing of an angel on a beach looking out at the eye of God in the sun. So... Just so, you know, just in case you were checking it out, wanted to see or wondering what it was. Thank you so much for tuning in to the broadcast. I implore you all to go to wakeupcalldt.com and become a member. It's very easy to do so. All you have to do is right here where it says total access to all content. You can go ahead and subscribe there for updates, and you can also sign in or register to be a part of wakeupcalldt.com. There's videos right here. Two of our Syracuse Orange football specials are right there for you, as well as every episode of, the, of Wake Up Call on demand on these venues. You can click on the RSS feed, the Podbean podcast, the TuneIn Radio piece of it, and the iTunes podcast, and that'll bring you to the shows. And then right here, the Mix LR Live tab. This will be on. You can click to turn it on when we are live during the show, and it gives you all the information about when we're typically on Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on MixLR.com backslash DT. Something else really cool is that I have my own ticker. I always wanted my own ticker, and that's got all my information. So that's all the stuff that I've written in there and manipulated the code to be the colors of my company, black, white, and orange. So you can see right there, Syracuse and CNY Game Show Night. Our next one for CNY Game Show Night is going to be October, the end of October. Uh, that'll be coming up on October 25th at 7 p.m. at the Wildcat Sports Pub. And, of course, to follow on Twitter at CallDT, like the page on Facebook at WakeUpCallDT, and follow on Instagram 
at wakeupcall underscore DT. And you can also see down here, I want to thank all the Central New York businesses. Support our community by supporting local business. I want to thank Carvel DeWitt, Chick-fil-A Cicero, FanHands.com, the Penn and Trophy Center now on 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. I want to thank True by Hilton, Syracuse Camillus, in Township 5 in Camillus, New York. The Press Room Pub, downtown in Historic Herald Place, as well as Canine Campground, which is right down the road from the Penn and Trophy Center in East Syracuse. Looking Glass Events, Dry Sig Apparel and Dry Sig Lady, D R E I S S I G. Making your apparel for your event, your business, your team, whatever it may be. Go to Teal Avenue and check them out there. You can also go online to drysigapparel.com and drysiglady.com. Giovanni's Tuxedos and Formal Wear, where I got my tuxedos for my wedding. Also got my newest suit. Honda City of Liverpool, where I get my Hondas from. Utica Pizza Company, 315 Chiropractic and Wellness. Lawrence L.J. Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson of Gilbo Realty. Get in touch with him for commercial or personal property and for investments by calling 315 Seven four eight two five two four and the Wildcat Sports Pub. You can check us out there once a month with West Genesee. Check us out once a month at Chick Fil A Cicero with CNS. And I want to give a special thanks to the Syracuse Stallions who just signed on as well. And quick links to our coverage. You're gonna have a quick link here to Syracuse football, Syracuse men's basketball, fantasy football advice, the Jaguars coverage on the Prowl the second year of the CNY Pop Festival, and the on-demand radio archive of over a 1,000 wake-up call episodes that you can check out there. And you can also see on the Who's DT tab, there's the Fan Cave, the Guest Wake Up Call YouTube channel. Central New York tab has all the companies we work with. The Show Archive, the QS acronym, constant updates and special exclusives with the Syracuse basketball and football pages. The Right Now page, the Fantasy Football page with our predictions and so much more. The Right Now page is our online article where you can read what I write right now. Get it? And then on the More tab, you can see the ACC page, the American Athletic page, the Jaguars page on the Prowl, and so much more. So make sure you're checking us out. And like I said, you can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, all there for the taking for you to listen into and be a part of and connect with. So thank you so much for tuning into the show. Thank you to my guests as well. God bless you, and I can't wait to talk with you soon. Be well.